Fédération Équestre Internationale. Un sponsor des Longines FIA Fall Cup Finals depuis 1993. Good afternoon and welcome to Paris. We're on the final day of the 2018 Longines FEI World Cup Jumping Final. And this is an accumulation of two days of brilliant sport over Thursday and Friday. Day off yesterday, we're here with the top 29 who come forward to jump the first of two rounds of jumping, two Grand Prix tracks, and on the screens at the moment, a replay from earlier in the week. It could have actually been either day, because this combination, BZ Man of the United States of America, previous winners on Breitling LS, have been in front in the number one spot on the first two days. So come forward on zero penalties. More about that later. I'm Phil Gazala. I've got the pleasure of being on the side of the arena here in Paris and alongside me Jess Curtin and between us we hopefully are going to bring you all the action and excitement because Jess we are in for some serious excitement. That's for sure Phil it's fantastic to have the opportunity to be here ringside in Paris for this final day of competition in the Longines FEI World Cup final it's really come down to a close fight and uh, I think we're going to see two fantastic rounds of sport and who knows, it's very, very close for who will take that title here in Paris this afternoon. Well, as we have said, we've, we've busy Madden, what we've saw, we're actually, I think, watching Daniel now on the screen, but the, um, I think this is busy again, isn't it? Yes, it is. Let's just have a quick talk about busy because we've, this has been faultless. Yes, we, we have to talk about Beezy because she is with Breitling in the lead at this moment. Of course, it's still a long way to go, but they have been foot perfect the first two days. She's jumped three rounds. She was clear the first day. She was double clear the second day. And uh, you can see with round for round, she starts to relax and starts to allow that smile come that we've seen so many times before. There was close contender after day one, Daniel Doy, so he fell foul to that difficult line for the combination. And Henrik von Eckermann, he is the man hot on the heels with Torvax Mary Lou. He is the one chasing Beezy for that title. And these two are in very, very good form and a big, big danger for that title. Of course, Henri von Eckermann, winner of the Western European League. That's the qualification in Europe to get to the final. Been in form for the last several months, and what a lovely mare this is as well. Mary Lou is a great mare, and yet getting the prefix a Torvex to make sure that she does stay for Henrik and for Sweden. And uh, she really is one of these animals that you just love to see. She's very keen, she loves her job, and she's every day when she comes out, she's concentrated and ready to win. And Ruth Van Ackerman, third last year with Omaha at the same finals. Let's have a quick look at the start list. The top eight to go. Philippe Amrel gets us underway for Brazil. First to go, ironically, was last to go on day one. Julien Epelard, one of four French riders still in the competition. They started with four, they've got four. And Kirsten Van Der Veen, the United States. Ten riders at the beginning, left with seven. Kevin Stout, disappointing for him. He's down, he's slipped down the leaderboard as have previous winner on two occasions, Steve Godat for Switzerland. And the same goes for Marcus Enning. He was bidding to win four titles. It's not going to happen this weekend. That's the third list. Alison Robertel with the wonderful ace. Again, performed very well over the last couple of days, but not in contention. Harry Smolders with Emerald. They are just 
two fences and one point, nine points behind the leader. Now we go into the last five. McLean Ward, last year's winner with double H's year, two fences off BZ Madden, as is Douglas Lindelow with Sacramento for Sweden. Then we've got the last two to go will be Enrique Van Eckerman, who's just one fence behind BZ Madden, the overnight leader. Well, the atmosphere here in this arena is becoming absolutely electric. Jess, it's, there's, there is actually the course designer, Santiago Brelli, talking to Enric Gunnachman and BZ Madden there walking the course. They look pensive, but it's not surprising, is it? Yeah, I, of course they look pensive, but I do think it's more concentration at this stage and everything else, because one thing is for sure, when you walk a course built by Santiago Varela, you need to be on the ball. You don't just count the numbers and walk the distances. You look and think, why has he put this here? For what reason has he built this particular line? What did he have before? What does he have after? What is he trying to achieve? And this is one of the beautiful things about a course built by this man. It's really asking for the utmost concentration from horse and rider. And we saw there before Henrik von Ackermann just talking to Santi. Of course, he wants to understand what way the course builder was thinking when he built this course. There is Peter Good de Vos. We saw Olivier Philippart uh, there with a quick shot of uh, Olivier. He's done. A, he's climbed up the leaderboard with just two fences off the lead. Yes, Olivier having a very unfortunate mistake at the first jump. Very unfair mistake at the first jump the first day um, with his wonderful mare and uh, came back to be in the jump off yesterday and really put themselves deservedly right up the leaderboard and actually in contention in sixth place, two fences behind the leader. Some cracking shots of these riders' faces that actually tells you exactly what's happening here. This is serious stuff. There's yeah, a lot of nodding, shaking of heads, serious looks from the riders. It's lovely to see this camera work because obviously, you know, the riders are in their own world. At this point, you don't actually notice whether a camera's on or not. So you, you really get that pure uh, look. You don't get the Instagram look from the riders. You just get that pure look, how they're feeling at that moment. And there we see Santiago Varela Ulastras. He is level four for Spain, as we all know. And he's put a time allowed of 65 seconds on this course. 12 obstacles, 15 efforts. And we will see with that time allowed, which has been a little bit of a handmark through the entire weekend, if it's going to be tight and force the riders to really keep going and perhaps just get a silly mistake on the way through hurrying. There we go, now we're into it. Number one, up at the top again, red and black vertical the same, 155, a long run down to number two. This Ariat Oxer is one meter 50, one meter 60 wide. Then they have 19 meters down to the FEI Oxer, 160 wide, 153 high. Then quick around the corner, keep the rhythm beside the in-gate, one meter 60, this Toubon Clomain verti vertical. And then a difficult line, 24 meters 50 up, to the Equiterm Oxer, which does have a water mat underneath, and then 2190 into the combination with a white plank on top of grey poles coming in, and it's 11 meters 30 coming out to this 152 160 Oxer, which are jumping right into the corner. Spin back. Now the riders really have to get the line to this CWD 1 meter 60 vertical. It's 23 meters 50 on a bending line to this GL events, 153, 160, then quick down, 1480 to the B-Day behind the vertical, and then this testing line out of the corner, Longin Oxer, and then it's six strides, 26, 20, quite a difficult distance on this six strides, triple combination, Oxer, 153 by 160, 1130 to vertical, 158, and eight meters to 153 160 wide really jumping into the corner this oxer and then they really have to just keep flowing around the corner keep the balance keep the rhythm and keep the horses together for one meter 63 longine vertical to finish the track and that has to be done in 65 seconds or less 29 starters we started with 37 competitors on the first day, we're down to 29 over this first of the two Grand Prix courses. Two completely separate courses. There'll be a break for approximately one hour in between the two rounds for a brand new course to be built. 26 at the moment today on this course, and then approximately 20. I say approximately 20 go forward to the second round, because if there's people on equal penalties, then it may be more, or it may be one or two, yes. So, we start with the 29, I should say, 29 coming forward for this round, 20 going into the second round. Jess, you've walked the course a couple of times. 
65 seconds. The time, it's not, there's not a lot of time to play around. No, there's, there's never a lot of time to play around in one of these courses. But of course, it's like everything, only after the first couple of horses will we really get the feeling for how tight the time is. Uh, because there are a couple of options out there and we will see whether the riders can keep galloping through the corners or whether they do have to just every now and then take a couple of little half, half halts, just bring their horses back together to collect them, to have the power to jump the next line. Well, the first of the 29 competitors in to the arena to get us underway. Sole representative for Brazil, 15 nations represented by the 29 riders in this, the first of two rounds on the final day of the Longines FEI World Cup finals, the jumping finals here in Paris. Philippe Amarel for Brazil, riding Premier Cuthos BZ won the South American League. All the riders have to qualify over the last eight months. The 16 leagues that take part all around the globe and only the top ones get a ticket to this grand final. Philippe Amaral, Premier Carthos BZ for Brazil. Philip giving a good ride over the, the last couple of days, just getting really caught out a few times through the technical tracks from Santi, but presenting himself well yet again with this horse. And of course, Phil, it's important to remember we may only have a, a handful of riders up at the top there in contention for a podium position and to take away the coveted title, but this competition in itself is like a Sunday Grand Prix at a five-star event. There is a lot of money to be won in this competition today, and that is also a reason for some of these riders who are not a contention to bring out these wonderful horses again and have a shot to jump a double clear today and take home a big portion of that prize money. Total prize fund, 300,000 euros for the class itself, plus a bonus for the champion to be decided. And this horse, a horse with a big stride, a little bit of a slow mover, but a big stride, made that four strides look easy. Takes the six strides here, was a little off it. And there is the danger that the five, really depending on where they land after that oxer, whether the five gets a little flat or even a little short. He takes the option of five down here, there will be others who will take six to give them a little bit of a better chance to jump that water. He'll be looking to jump a little to the outside here. Again, really trying to give room, doesn't want to be too flat here. Now you can see just touching his way through that combination, there's quite a bit of room in that triple coming home. He's going to be just inside, just over the time. John Whitaker there for Great Britain, who's not actually riding in this competition, but brother Michael is. Philippe Amaral, Premier Carthos, completes with 35 penalties. The penalties for today's score, which you see on the screens, will be added to their penalties brought forward that they've accumulated over the first two days of jumping. Yeah, Philippe trying to give room, but the horse just looking into the water mat, that is the danger. Jumps this combination very well. Just he's quite long inside in this combination. He's varying a little bit, as is the triple combination, varying a little bit his distances, just wanting to tempt the riders to get their horses a little bit flat, especially with another testing track still to come this afternoon. One of the, the, the last remaining rider for Australia, second in the Australian League, Jamie Kermont, with Yandu Oaks Constellation for Australia. Brings forward 26 penalties. I think Jamie's owners, Kerry and John Winning, of course, who are great supporters of the sport in Australia, will be sitting, hopefully, in front of their screens, listening to us. So we say hi to them and uh, very good luck for their horse in here this afternoon. Great to see such support in countries like Australia for the sport, wanting the sport to get better and better. 
He took the option of five strides there. Puts him really out to get the six coming in. Nice piece of riding there from Jamie. Of course, this is a big horse, takes a little bit of angling to manage him through these technical distances. Also on the five, has to sit up now for the three. Ooh, get a bit deep there. Just got after the five strides, is it temptation just to get dragged down into that vertical. This combination really suits his big stride. He's got enough room to stretch and use his power. Good round from this two. Outside that 65 seconds time allowed. And final score, 31 penalties for Jamie Kerbin. 31 penalties for Jamie Kerbin and Yandu Oaks Constellation for Australia. Just see, he tried to get it back on the three after taking the forwards five, but there was just no room for the last stride. But he can be really happy with that result. We started on Thursday with ten riders representing the United States. Three of them have stood, have stood down. We're now left with seven and the first of that seven to go for the United States. Andy Kosher riding Navalo de Porton. Brings forward, also brings forward 26 points. At his first final, just now inside the top 100 riders in the Longin FEI global rankings. In 96th place, Andy Kosher. Yeah, Andy was taking a good look at the track, at the lines. Of course, a rider that really likes to ride Fords, well known for being a real speed merchant back at home, wins an awful lot of competitions and has just fell foul a little bit to some of the lines set up by Santiago. You just see there, he just tries to collect the horse and ends up just getting out of balance. This horse has been a great partner for him over the years. Just see in the corner, really trying to keep the stride. Bouncy set him up. Went forwards at the beginning, which just left a little bit less room for the last stride there. The riders really have to be careful there to be a little patient at the beginning in order to give them room in the last stride. Well, significantly half a second inside the time allowed for rider number three in this competition. He completes on 38 penalties, so three down, 12 volts added to the penalties brought forward. So 38 penalties for Andy Kosher and Navala Dupotin for the United States. Yeah, this, this course really demanding balance and rhythm from horse of rider. It's incredibly important, the harmony, the, the rideability of the, of the horse and the smooth movements of the rider in order to be collect and lengthen without even really noticing it. One of the favorites coming into this competition, one of the quartet representing our hosts here in Paris. It hasn't gone according to plan, but he's still in the competition. Julien Epillard for France with the usual suspect, Deutsch. Julian's campaign here in Paris not going exactly the way he had hoped. Really happy to come to this final with this lovely homebred suspect. Had won the GCT in Paris at the feet of the Eiffel Tour last summer. And uh, really coming here wanting to set a light, but suspect just jumping a little bit out of form the entire weekend. But it's on home ground, and Julian wa not wanting to disappoint the home crowds coming out again on Sunday. Of course, like we said earlier, there is a big pot of money to be won in this competition. It is worth it within its own right, even if you're not in contention for that Longines title. It's worthwhile to go in there today and have a shot at it.
also gets dragged in the last stride. They really have to be careful there to get themselves a little bit of room coming in. It's a little bit of a quiet distance, and they need to wait at the beginning of the distance to have place at the end to jump into that combination well. Well, it's a delicate round from the clock point of view. That was two and a half seconds inside the two, 65 seconds. It's not as tight as perhaps we thought it might be from the beginning of the competition, but the eight to add to the 22 volts brought forward. So 30, 30 penalties for Julian Epiart and usual suspect Doge. Julian really seeing that he was getting dragged into the base of that, desperately trying, giving half halt, of course, with the hacker more so he can have a little bit more intense with the hand in front of the jump, but just not enough to give him room to stretch over that back bar. Now we go to Ireland. Sole representative left representing Ireland in the competition today. Mark McCauley, who did so well during the Western European League qualification process over the last few months. Mark McCauley for Ireland with the 14-year-old gelding Mibello. 22 penalties brought forward. Now Mark certainly a little bit disappointed with his results so far. Came here very, very motivated and wanted to do well and, and said himself, you know, that during the course the first day he felt it was going so good um, that he thought, well, maybe I'll just try to win this. And of course, Sometimes you can just get caught out in those situations. But he felt the horse very good yesterday when he worked him and he said, I'm just going to go back in there on Sunday and again have another shot to try and be successful in this one stage today, in this final stage. Just got dragged over the right shoulder there up the inside. He wasn't able to keep the balance and keep the weight behind and the power behind to jump that plank. Also taking the five strides. Quite a few riders taking the five strides on that line to that oxer. Of course, it saves time, but it is tricky enough to jump that front bar. Gave him a good ride in there, but if anything, Mibello perhaps finding finally he could have had the last last stride a little bit shorter to have more power. It's a tricky line into that triple combination. Mark McCauley for Ireland, two down, adds the eight penalties to the 22 brought forward, finishes on 30 penalties. Mark McCauley for Ireland, 30 penalties with Mabello. Twenty-nine competitors representing fifteen nations. On this, the final day of the Longin FEI World Cup jumping final here in Paris. Great sport over Thursday and Friday. And now the grand finale for Jordan. Ibrahim Hani Bisharat with 10 year old Stallion, Chaktino. And as the name may suggest, by Chaco Blue, 21 penalties brought forward by Hani Bisharat. Chaktino, of course, like you just said, from the great Chaco Blue, who wasn't wasn't long in the sport himself, but really what a breeding stallion he has been for Paul Schockermuller, his, his offspring very quickly establishing themselves at the top level of the sport. And didn't this horse jump well on Friday? What a fantastic round. And those who are watching, remember, Hani tried to take a stride out to the last jump. And uh, Chaktino said, oh, it's a little bit too far away and added a mini, mini stride and still jumped it. And uh, Hani laughing a little bit afterwards. It was just one time penalty, I think, wasn't it? Didn't yeah, he just got caught by the time, but didn't the horse jump wonderfully? And he saved him on the last jump, which is nice to see that in a partnership that sometimes it's not the rider that saves the situation, but actually the horse. Jumping again very well here. Careful horse with an awful lot of power and elasticity. And Hani giving a very correct ride here, riding his lines very clean. Ended up having to ride forwards, although he took the six to the ox, I had to ride forwards, and then it just, again, caught him on the vertigo. Yeah, getting dragged into the triple as well. But 
and catches him. This triple combination really starting to prove to be a problem because of the distance in front of it. Two down, clock's over the 65 seconds, so one time penalty. Nine penalties in all, added to the 21. 30 penalties for Ibrahim Hani Bisharat and Chakido for Jordan. Three riders on 30. Obviously, we start jumping in reverse order of the penalties brought forward over the first two competitions. So, Julian Epiard, Mark McCauley, and Hani Bisharat all on 30 penalties at the moment. But Phil, it really can be seen already at this early stage how important the rhythm and the balance is to jump this course. And the riders really have to have a good plan and be able to execute their plan together with their horse. For the United States, Kirsten van der Veen with ball runs for Stino de Tilly. 21 penalties on the card. These two jumped a good round on Friday, looking much more relaxed than they did the day before. Another one getting caught out through the length of the triple combination. Two down. Eight penalties to add. Great round with just one down on Friday, but adds eight to the 21 penalties brought forward. 29 in total for Kirsten van der Veen and bull runs for Stino de Tilly. Yeah, I could really see Kirsten has a lovely way of riding him always forwards in a rhythm, but just lacking a little bit in that ability just to be able to just give him a little half halt and set him up, but certainly have not showed themselves in bad light at all this weekend. Now for Switzerland, and Switzerland have been so successful in the Longin FEI World Cup final jumping over the last 12 years. Three wins on the board for Switzerland. This man's not much won it, but he's here for Switzerland. Paul Esterman with the 12 year old gelding Lord Pepsi. 21 penalties. Certainly, this is a combination that are well able to jump a clear around this course today. Got a last minute opportunity to come here to the final when one of the others dropped out at the very last moment. And this is a horse that likes to get in the ring and likes to jump, can be a little spooky the first day. And certainly the more he can jump, the better it gets. So could they come and deliver us the first clear round this afternoon? Takes also the option of the five strides. has to get this distance right into the triple. Has to have enough room, but not too flat. One jump away from our first clear round. Time. What a superb round. Well judged on the clock. Quarter of a second inside the time allowed. That's a clear for Switzerland. Clear round for Paul Esterman and Lord Pepsi for Switzerland. Yeah, Paul and Pepsi really making it look easy in there and showing why, although they had not got enough points to qualify for the final when other riders dropped out, that he got the opportunity to come and showing you the depth 
of quality on the Western European League that there are really 10 others who didn't get the qualification just sitting behind, well able to come in here and jump a clear out on the final day. And Andy Kistler, <laughs> as ever, 120% behind his team riders. Great to see that round for them. That's the 21 penalties brought forward from the first two days for Paul Esterman, but he is the first clear here on day four. Now for Great Britain, Robert Whittaker with Catwalk the fourth. 20 penalties brought forward. Yeah, Robert worked hard over the winter season to get the points to come to the final. Had a fence down on the first two, both one in each class. Yeah, cut, and Friday. Catwalk jumping well, but not really sparkling, just really silly mistakes the first couple of days. But of course, Robert, like Paul, really wanting to try and get clear in this round to set himself up to go in and have a shot to win a part of that 300,000 purse that's available in this Longines final today. Tried to help him a little off the front bar and just took away his, his scope slightly. Plus a time penalty. One down. One time penalty. So five to add. 25 the final total for Robert Whittaker and Catwalk the fourth. Well, the crowd cheering gets a little louder as one of the heroes of the sport of jumping in France is in the arena here in Paris. Olympic team gold medalist, world number four in the global rankings, Kevin Stout with Silver Do de Vertin, HDC for France. 19 penalties forward. Jess, it wasn't a happy start for Kevin. No, Kevin chose to ride his longtime partner, Revere, on day one, and they really had a miserable round. And uh, since then, owners and Kevin have decided that Revere um, will slowly go into retirement this year, not straight away. He'll jump some, some classes, of course, this year, but he will go this season direction retirement and uh, like Kevin said you know these these horses they need to be kept a little bit a little bit busy you can't just throw them out in the field and forget about them and this is their plan with Rever just to slowly wind him down but he jumped with this horse fantastic class oh a really stupid mistake fantastic class on Friday in the jump off so he really came came back and uh, of course he's much too far away to be in contention but had every right to have a shot also to win this class today but that mistake will have put him really out of contention and be nice to see that on the replay it was a really silly mistake on the back bar and again looking looking to want to get a little bit too quickly back on the floor Two down, eight to add to the 19 for one of the heroes of the sport in France. 27 penalties in total for Kevin Stout and Silver de, de Bertin. Yeah, you can just see he jumps in and that combination a little long. He doesn't go up to the front bar, stays a little bit off as he does here and just not stretching for the back bar. Really a sign of a little bit of tiredness and of course this can happen at this stage of the championship and when we have a long line like that last triple combination, it can trick them into having a bit of a long stride and losing the power. Now a former winner on two occasions for Switzerland, Steve Gerdat, with the wonderful 12-year-old mayor, Bianca. Not in contention this weekend for a third title. Yeah, Steve, really both days having a little bit of an unlucky story. The first day 
really just touching that plank went down on the on the extra stride and touched the plank and then the second day having an unlucky moment in the triple combination but surprisingly he hasn't yet dug himself a hole and jumped into it blaming himself for every second so hopefully steve and bianca can come and deliver us the second clear round for switzerland today and show their real true form 19 penalties caption now on the screen Bianca is of course a very exuberant jumper horse that uses a lot of energy when she jumps it's never enough for her just to pop over a jump she really wants to get up in the air and give a very very flashy jump of course that does use energy beautifully out of the combination there well supported by Steve Takes a six, but gets it also a little long. Nicely supported to get up over that water tray. Good shot in. Beautifully over the middle and great out. Only one jump left for the second clear round for Switzerland today. Plenty of time and plenty of air. That's a great clear for Steve Gerdat and Andy Kistler, chef to keep, puffing his cheeks out. He's a happy man. Two riders for Switzerland left in the competition. Both have gone clear on the first of the two competitions this afternoon. Steve Gerdat, clear on Bianca, maintains the 19 penalties in the World Cup qualification. Lovely to see this round. Here we could see the, the pure class of Steve Gerda's riding. Very relaxed today. And Bianca also looking really concentrated. And nice to see this round. And not only Andy Kistler, but also Renata Fuchs sitting up here beside us, nearly jumping out of her chair during Steve's round. Now we go to the winner of the Central European Northern League for the qualifications for the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup final. Hermes Rudd with the 10 year old mare Ibel van der Groot Hut. 18 penalties forward from Thursday and Friday. Yeah, this combination yet again have caused quite a stir um, here with their with their great jumping in, in Gothenburg at the Longines FEI European Championships. It was the same. It's been jumping very good here. Like many, just failing a little bit in experience and getting caught out. Just here you can see this horse very exuberant and Hermes just does look as if he could spend a few days in the gym and just get those core muscles a little bit better to be able to sit out this exuberant jump that this mare does. Of course, a lot of traits similar to her father, the great Verdi, is ridden by Michael van der Floyden. And Hermes really doing a great job, allows her to go in her way, not trying to shorten her, letting her be herself and to really help her, you know, having that neck long in front helps her to balance this very exuberant hind end, which is coming with a lot of power. Can he get this line into the combination? Look at this beautiful animal jumping. Yeah, just gets caught out there. Still a little bit on the nose. Stupid mistake for this pair. <laughs> Picked up a time penalty early on in the week as well. So one time penalty plus the four, five to add to the 18. 23 volts in all for Ermas Drag and Ibel van der Grunhard. Keeps running to the combination, just sits there, lets her jump the middle and then trusts her to jump out, but you can see she's still got the balance on, the, on her front legs because those hind legs are still coming down. And that's just a question of experience and perhaps a few more core muscles from Hermes. Michael Whitaker for Great Britain. Riding at his 25th 
Longin FEI World Cup final. No man has ever ridden to more of them. That man there you just saw has won a couple. And that was brother John. Michael Whitaker for Great Britain with JB's hot stuff. 17 penalties brought forward. Jane Bean's hot stuff really grown up into a great Grand Prix horse. Oh, and Michael really giving it some on the four strides. Of course, this a very careful horse with not the biggest stride. And uh, the third day jumping at this level, of course, a, a careful horse like this can get a little bit more respect and just needing the impulse from the rider to keep galloping to the jump and not backing off thinking oh this is really big and I need room and motivation from Michael great here beautiful piece of riding to that oxer of course he has to see that he gets his line because he's got to move up there but he doesn't want to be too flat going for seven it's gonna get long inside now skip on a jump good shot Michael just the last the clock's a worry. He's over that 65 seconds. So one time penalty, that's a disappointment, but it was a super round from JB's Hot Stuff. Michael Whitaker for Great Britain with JB's Hot Stuff and one time penalty to the eight, the 17 brought forward, 18 in total. Yeah, Michael really paid for the for length of stride in this course and the fact that this horse was so careful it's the third day of of jumping at this level but what a fantastic round they jumped and he did he did the cleverest thing he could adding the extra stride to the triple combination it helped him to jump the combination to keep the horse with power but of course it cost him on the time but really a super super round from this pair well it was a great start on thursday for the man bidding to be the first man in history or the first rider in history to win four, no less than four, World Cup finals. It wasn't to be on day two. So now with 17 penalties, Marcus Henning for Germany with Cordado NRW. Yes, the NRW star star standing for the Nordrhein Westfalen Landgestut, which is national stud of Germany, where this horse stands and is a very asked for stallion. Again, an unlucky moment on Friday coming to the triple combination. Just seemed to run over the inside shoulder and Marcus got too deep coming in and then just had the A and the B element of the triple combination which really threw them back in the overall rankings having been jumping spectacularly. Just see how beautifully the way Marcus can sit still on the vertical, slowing the horse down in the air to allow him to take the six strides to that oxer, where the five would actually have been easier for this horse, but needing the six to get into that tricky double. Here he takes the five up the inside, jumps it, and now he has to sit behind the movement, does it beautifully. To watch here, you can just see Coronado gently leaning over the inside shoulder. Jan gets caught out again going into the triple. Just see him not staying straight on the way, just running up the inside there and stealing the power from himself. So, first part of the combination down the back part of that oxer. Four to add, 21 penalties for Marcus Henning and Coronado for Germany. We've seen that first part of the combination, Jess, play, play its part. Absolutely, and I, I would dare to say that it's perhaps playing more of a part than the course builder actually thought. The combination itself is 1 meter 53, 160 wide, 1 meter 58, and 1 meter 53, 160 coming out. It's it's not a killer, but it's the distance in front of it. It's the fact that it's at the end of the course. It's proving quite difficult for the riders to get exactly the right takeoff spot, spot with exactly the right speed in order to jump it clear. We stay with Germany. Just two riders for Germany in this final day. 
here in Paris. This is the second of those two. Daniel Deusser for Germany with Cornet de Moore. And this combination who won this incredible title four years ago, carrying forward 17 penalties. Daniel had a great win last night in the Grand Prix here on the other tour with his other ride, Cornet, who he had thought possibly to use in this final, but then felt that Cornet d'Amour was jumping best, so it stuck to him. Had a great first day, and then really got caught out on the line into the triple, into the double yesterday, actually ha causing him to have to have a stop there. And again, like Marcus Enning, absolutely ruining his chances of standing on the podium or even taking home that trophy today. But Cornet Damour is in form, and he too is having a shot at this competition today. Just see Daniel really giving impulse with his legs, supporting him, jump the back bar, got it. Now he has to jump out over the back bar. Oh, what a piece of riding from Daniel. Picked him up and carried him through there. And inside the time, another clear. Two for Switzerland, one for Germany. Daniel Deusser remains on the 17 penalties. Clear for Daniel Deusser with Cornet de Moore for Germany. Yeah, that we could really see in that round. That's one of the reasons why Daniel Deusser is one of the best riders in the world. He's not only a stylist, but when he needs to help a horse, he is there. And Cornet d'Amour giving everything for him and owner Stefan Conter breathing. And Fluffy in the background also looking very nervous, but uh, doing a great job there today. Now for the United States, Jamie Barge riding Luebo. 15 penalties brought forward and, and Jess didn't go completely according to plan on Thursday, but a great round on Friday for these two. Absolutely, and there is trainer Carl Brox in the background. Certainly, I mean, you, you would say it didn't go according to plan. You know, this is a girl coming in here. She's not on the, on the top stage like some of these other riders every week. She had a fence down the first day, having had a good shot for a very uh, high spot and came back in on Friday and jumped a double clear and a fast double clear. So, I mean, really, uh, she may be sitting in 14th position, but this girl and this horse have actually done a, a really good job so far here. And her trainer, Karl Brox, just built his own stables in Osnabrück in Germany. Very much here supporting her and Karl, a strong man, pushing her on telling her to believe in herself, that she could jump a double clear in here today, but unfortunately not went to be. Jumped a little too flat there. Yeah, and you can see now, actually, Louis was starting to get tired. When he stretches on the oxers, not finding the power to back off and jump those verticals, but again, well ridden from Jamie. Twenty-three penalties total, with the two fences down, added to the fifteen brought forward. Jamie Barge for the United States, Loebo. Twenty-three penalties, a accumulated score. Yeah, she tries, tries to help, sits into the saddle, tries to help, but there was just the power was all running out the front door, and here she says, whoa, but again, no reaction from Louisville, just keeps going forwards, not able to really sit and keep that power to jump that tall vertical. And we stay with the United States, a lady we haven't seen for 12 years since her last final. Alison Robitel with the 13-year-old Grey gelding ace. Alison with her lovely ace. What a great combination. Lovely to see that this wonderful horse, so well produced from Stephanie van der Brink, has gone on to such a lovely person as Alison. And what a great partnership they formed. And, uh, of course, Alison has to say thanks to her dad, 
for being such a great supporter of her sport. And they've really been getting better each day here. Jumped a really good round on Friday. A little bit rusty adds there. Gonna be long here. But look oh, at this horse answer. That, that is partnership. <laughs> and of course, when you haven't been at doing the sport at the top level, Alison really taking time out to have two children. It just does take a little bit to get back into it. And you can really see round for round the self-confidence really starting to come back. Oh, she got lucky there. That could help her here. Come on, Ace. Well done. Come on, Alison. It's tight with the time. Oh, and don't check now. It's too late to check. It's not going to make the clock. It's just gone over. Great round from Alison Robertel and Ace. One-time penalty. So that puts them on 15 penalties. 15 penalties for Alison Robertel and Ace for the United States. You can just see she added a stride coming into the combination and then really kicked. And Ace said, that's fine, you kick, we jump. And showing again how much on this course today when you need to add strides, when the rider feels they need to collect the horse, which is correct, um, they're just having a serious problem to get inside the time. Need to find the power through the forwards movement. As the great Paul Schockenbauer said, power by speed. Mm. Now, number nine in the London FEI Global Rankings for France, Simone Delestre with Chessel Zimquest. Carried forward 13 penalties from the first two days. Had one down on Thursday, a clear and four faults in the jump off on day two. Finding himself in 12th position today, former number world number one. The last jump down on Friday and the first jump down today. Mm. And there you see, I was just going to say, you know, Chazal is a little bit of a Dr. Jackal and Mr. Hyde. And uh, when he's decided that it's not going to be his day, then it's not going to be his day. And he's just said, Simon, Paris Bercy is not my place on Sunday today. And They've had so many and many amazing rounds together, but every now and then this does happen. And it's unfortunately that it's just two day in front of the home crowd that it does happen. Seaman always has his little stick there to give him a, a little motivational whack. He's a very talented horse, but he does need Seaman to just motivate him all the time. that the former world number one will strike out of his memory. Finishes on 32 penalties, Simon de Lestre and Chesel Zimquest for France. Yeah, you could just see already two strides away, he knocked down number one, already two strides away of number two. Chesel was saying, Simon, I don't really feel like this today. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just took a little bit of a little bit of persuasion and they got finished. We stay with our hosts here in Paris. And the leading French rider at the moment in these championships, Roger Ebost for France with Sangria de Coti. In 11th place at the moment, 12 penalties brought forward. One down in the first day. Time penalty on Friday for the Olympic team champion. Yeah, disappointing the time. The time fault really on Friday jumped a super, super round. And Bosti, as usual, providing us with some great acrobatic movements as he went around the course with this lovely, lovely daughter of Quapris de Boimago. Of course, everybody hoping for a French to jump clear on the home ground, really want to get
give the home crowds who've made a big effort to come out here today. It's a sunny day outside, so it's not exactly the weather to come inside to an indoor arena. Nice to see that a lot of the French and, and also from much further afield have turned out to come and watch this great competition today. She's not naturally very quick, is she, Jess? It's, which no, she's not naturally very quick, but Bosti is naturally very quick, and you always like to think that the two things together can just fall somewhere into the right place, but they're struggling slightly now. He's just going to have to keep going. He has to gallop around the corner now to the last, which he's doing. Come on, Bosti. He knows it's tight. What a brilliant time. That looked... A second inside the time. It didn't look like that, Jess, halfway round. Brilliantly done. He had a time penalty on Friday. Bosti wasn't going to let that happen today. That's a great clear. That's got the crowds warmed up here in Paris. Clear for Roger E. Bost and Sangria Ducotti for France. Yeah, beautifully managed from Bosti. He had a very good plan when he went in there. He knew that he could keep going forward through the triple combination and once he landed, there was no more holding back and he really did take a risk to the last, but it was a very calculated risk and that was, <laughs> that was the one that put him into the jump off and the entire French squad there very well looked after French team. We're down to the top 10. In 10th place, on 12 penalties for Spain, Eduardo Abare Azna with Rockefeller de Pleville Bois Mago. Of course, Bosti is now only three jumps behind the leader, and in to say that, only three jumps, you know, in two big rounds like this, the strangest things can happen. You can't imagine, but we have to start from now on, we have to really start looking at podium places and the winner and this man who's been riding on the top of his game the whole weekend had an unlucky fault on friday but this horse has been jumping great his trainer thomas fuchs here with him it's all about stamina from the horse concentration and strength of nerves from the rider. This looking very good so far. Eduardo really polished in his riding. Has come on so much in the last couple of years. Superbly helped there. Spain looking for their first win in a World Cup final. In its 40th year, this wonderful competition, this prestigious indoor jumping competition. Oh, this competition. horse looking very safe today. Absolutely superb, and he made that look very, very easy. He jumped a similar round in the speed class on Thursday. As you say, Jess, he finished seventh on Thursday, unfortunately he's dropped three places on Friday, but another super round from Eduardo Avare Azna and Rockefeller de Pleville Boimago. He finishes on the 12 penalties in the first of the two rounds here today, level with Roger E. Bost for France. A very, very solid performance from this pair. And certainly from our point of view, Phil, and for all viewers at home, this is exactly what we want to see. We want to keep the pressure on from behind, keep pushing against those leaders to try and keep some excitement in the competition and uh, keep it still very open. In ninth place, one penalty ahead of the last two riders on 11 penalties, Peter Devos for Belgium with the 14-year-old Gelding Espoir. Yeah, Peter, of course, was in a similar position going into the finals of the Longines European Championships in Gothenburg last year, finished up in just behind those podium places, and he would like to change that this time. Not in the easiest position to do that, but the only way that he can do that is by jumping a clear eye now and keeping the pressure on those ahead of him. He's got one point in hand over Eduardo and Bosti. Beasy, the leader, is on zero. He is on 11. Oh, this horse jumping. Great sport that we're seeing in here today. Sneaks around the corner. Looks like he's going to take the five. 
does take the five. Has to really sit up now to get this. Yeah. Oh, he's quite long coming in there. Yeah, I can hear him. Oh, cool. gets a lucky touch. He's got time to balance. Stays on the 11. Another brilliant clear from Peter Dibos and Espoir for Belgium. That's three consecutive clears, Jess. It's hotting up this competition as we yeah, expected it to. I'm really enjoying this, and and it was a a little a little secret plan from the course builder, of course, to get a few clear rounds in this round, so that the second round can really play a part. Boy, it was far off that number three. Second round can play a part in this final competition. There is his wife <laughs> and his groom Simon in the background. Great help. Well, this is a man who has really had a change of fortune over the first two days of this, the 2018 Longines FEI World Cup jumping final. Harry Smolders for the Netherlands with Emerald. Finished with two down with Zinnius on Thursday and then pushed himself right up the leaderboard to finish second behind BZ Madden on Friday. Finds himself in eighth place at the moment with nine penalties brought forward. Yeah, Harry, uh, slight, slight unfortunate management plan on the first day. Used Zinnius, of course, not, not just in form this weekend, had a mistake also in the Grand Prix yesterday. But Emerald jumping then, fantastic, on Friday to put him right back up there. But on the nine points, he's a bit off the leader. He's not completely without contention for a podium place, but is he too far away to win the trophy? He had to come from behind in Gothenburg as well and did it amazingly. Oh, keeps the pressure on to come out and just, just caught that vertical. This will really throw Harry back again. Oh, that certainly will, Jess. That's two down. So he adds the eight. 17 penalties in total for Harry Smolders for the Netherlands and Emerald. Well, match. I would like watch Harry. He had the pressure on coming in, and he just tried to keep him straight and keep keep him motivated. But Emerald just went straight through that version. For Colombia, carrying forward. Nine penalties. Clear on Thursday. One-time penalty on Friday. Carlos Enrique Lopez with Admara second. Nine penalties on his card. And this pair sitting in the same position as Harry was sitting just behind those three eight falters in seventh place at the minute. But over two jumps behind the leader. jumped very flashy round on Friday of course originally seen under Emmanuel Gaudiano before being sold to sponsor from Carlos Lopez has always been a very talented horse Tries to help there, just doesn't get up behind. A 
really fighting to jump the fences. Just over the time, plus the one down. Carlos Enrique Lopez finishes on 14 penalties for Colombia. Carlos Enrique Lopez with Admar the second. 14 penalties. We're now down to the top six as we watch the replay. Admar's replay and Jess, the next three riders in the arena are just two fences off the overnight leader, BZ Madden. We're down to the three on eight. Yeah, I think we're now starting to get into those, those vital rounds that we'll be counting towards who can possibly win this trophy. These riders are in very, very close contention now. Rank 28th in the global rankings for Belgium, Olivier Philippard, an H&M legend of love. Great double clear on Friday in the second the table A competition. Eight faults, eight penalties on the scoreboard. Looked on day one as if he was going to be one of the hard luck stories yet again at this championship, but having number one down, but how he pulled himself back again on Friday and showed that these two are in great form. And this wild lady has to just keep cool now and Olivia be there for her and just get another clear round to keep them in touch. Olivier, a very sensitive rider, takes a lot of time, took ever so long time with this horse to get her really on his side. She was very wild as a young horse, but his belief and his patience really has got them up to the top level. <sighs> this could get long for them. He has to really, he's going for the inside. Takes the seven. She's got to get up now and oh. jump this. Oh, was the seven the right decision? An expensive single fence down. That's four to add to the eight. Twelve penalties now for Olivia Philippart, an H&M legend of love for Belgium. Like Michael Whittaker, I think he felt that it was just going to get too long on the six strides into the combination, took the seven, but of course, on the seven, the risk is exactly what happened, just to get a little dead in and then not stretch for the back bar. Disappointing for Olivier, looking like that, putting him out of contention, and his dad said something. I'm not quite sure what he said there, Philip. He said something. Ranked third in the London FEI Global Rankings, the reigning World Cup champion, McLean Ward for the United States with Double H Azure. Winners from 12 months ago here defending their title in Paris and two fences off the current leader, fellow countryman, BZ Man, McLean Ward, Double H Azure. Yeah, she's been jumping fantastic, but he did have a jump down on day one and did have a jump down on day two. And, you know, the old saying, if you want to win championships, you've got to jump clear rounds. This mare jumping exceptionally well. Of course, 12 months ago, Jess, she didn't touch a twig. No, she for, didn't. For four days. And he rode a blinder and... Again, a back bar catching him out. It's not going to be McLean's championship this time. This is, this is not the kind of stuff that gets you onto the podium. Jumping great, but just these back bars, just a little stiffness through the body seeming to, ca seeming to catch her out every day. So the four to add to the 12. 
as the reigning champion shakes his head. McLean Ward, double H Azure, finish on 12 penalties, penalties, which puts them now, the defending champions, now three fences behind BZ Madden, the current leader. Yeah, and at this stage, Peter DeVos up into fifth place. You can just see McLean comes on the turn, just still slightly on the bend and doesn't push off as she should. You see the right high not pushing as strong as the left and just getting caught on the back bar. And Again, as you say, really silly mistake. Peter, you're quite right. Obviously, Peter DeVos now on that 11. For the jump. The last man on eight penalties. Douglas Lindelow with his 13 year old gelding, Sacramento. Clear Thursday. Clear on the first round on Friday. One down in the jump off on eight penalties. Two fences off the leader. And certainly a combination that have the ability to win this final. But they've just got to leave the jumps up. Sacramento has to just keep jumping and stay relaxed. And Douglas needs to really use the strengths of this horse and really support in those moments. Oh, wanted to give himself a little bit of room to get the six, just booted that out. Peter Devos up into fourth now. Yeah. But this is it, the pressure is on from those guys on 12 faults, jumping the clear rounds. This competition is going to get thrown wide open, certainly for the podium places. It's all down to those last three, what's going to happen for the fight for the win. Oh, got lucky there. Hope they check that jump for the next rider. Well, all of the three eight falters coming into this at the first round, first of the two rounds on the Sunday, the eight falters are now all on 12. One down, four faults, 12 faults in the total for Douglas Lindelow and Sacramento for Sweden. Three to jump, Peter Devos, who came into this round on 11 faults, stays on 11 at the moment, which puts him up into fourth place. Certainly the, the 11 is really far away from BZ0 and certainly is opening, opening up the door. Uh, as far as BZ is concerned, but she'll not be interested in that. It's the next two that are her biggest rivals in this competition. And of course, it'll, a lot will depend on what, what they do now. What a performance has been for this man, his first ever Longin FEI World Cup final. He's ranked 76 in the world for the United States. Devin Ryan with his nine-year-old gelding, Eddie Blue. Clear Thursday, just the one time penalty on Friday on six penalties. Now what a campaign this pair have had so far. This lovely son from VDL Sirocco Blue, who has been a winner his entire career. Still very inexperienced at this level. And although Devon Ryan is a very accomplished rider an experienced rider certainly not at this level and he will really have to show strength of nerves today which he didn't show on the way there to number two didn't have a rhythm to number two he's going to have to find that rhythm now and stay in it this horse jumping exceptionally every day making it look easier and easier seeming to not care at all what is put in front of him going for the five right up the inside who oh, he touched it and again Eddie Blue really intelligent horse backing off himself finding himself room it's all about this line now come on Devin what a round these two are jumping that is exceptional what a brilliant round from Devin Rahn for the United States with this wonderful nine-year-old Eddie Blue.
They haven't touched a fence over the three days. They had the one-time penalty on Friday. They came into today on six penalties. They stay on six penalties. Jess, pressure on Enric Van Ekman and Beasy Madden from that man. Absolutely. You could see a little bit of this, Ryan, just sneaking little, little moments of nervousness, but um, it's obviously not the first time that this horse has noticed this because he just did not twitch an eyelid. He just kept jumping. And, you know, I think even in the next round, I think uh, the two of them, they've got, they've got nothing to lose. This is, this is an amazing situation, but certainly for Vobizi and also for Henrik, the pressure is really on now after that performance. Devin Rahn, six penalties, stays on the six with that wonderful clear. Two to go, Sweden, United States. First for Sweden, Henrik von Eckermann with Tovex Mary Lou, just one fence behind the current leader. There is Sylvie Robert, the lady that organizes this event, GL events. Henrik von Eckermann, who was on the podium in Omaha, Nebraska, in third place with Tovex Mary Lou. The silence in the arena now is incredible. Henrik picking up the tempo. Of course, this pair used to going fast. It's nothing unusual. Ooh, we got a bit deep there. And again. But she's answering. Mary Lou giving everything for Henrik in this round. I've got Maria Gretzer sitting in front of me here. Oh, he's deep. Oh, he's deep. It, she is. Oh, what a good girl. She's riding every fence, Maria Gretzer. That was absolutely brilliant. From the European silver medalist, has just pulled out another brilliant, brilliant clear round. Henrik van Eckerman with the fabulous Tovex Mary Lou stays on the four penalties. A superb clear from the Swede. Yeah, Mary Lou really giving everything for Henrik. You can just see there he got so close. The last stride was this length of pony stride. Henrik stayed cool and Mary Lou pulled him out of there like a true champion. She's something else, isn't she? She really she is, is something <laughs> else. And there is his support team, Henrik Anke Krona, team chef, and Karl Schneider, business manager. They know with that round that they're very, very, very close to getting their hands on that trophy. Last to go on the final day, the first of two competitions this afternoon here in Paris for the culmination of the 2018 Longin FEI World Cup final. BZ Madden for the United States with Breitling LS. Overnight leader on zero penalties. John Madden's taken up the same spot to stand and watch where he has the whole weekend. Hopefully his lucky spot. Saw him just close his eyes and take a deep breath. Of course, <sighs> like many others, busy today riding into the unknown with Breitling. Has not done a championship before. There is always the question, can Breitling hold the three days? Is he going to stay fresh and concentrated the three days? We're not worried about busy We know that she can do it. She's proved it on so many occasions before. It's the most difficult position to be in going into the last day to be the leader. There is an extra pressure of feeling that there is Ooh. something to lose. But she's been in this position before. Now, this line is very difficult for this combination. She has to keep him with his weight behind. He's got to keep the power behind, and he's got to get up and jump this, and he has to stretch now. Brilliant. And John Madden is getting very excited beside us here. Yes, and superb clear. Well, winners from 2013, BZ Madden on that occasion on Simon. She's put herself right in contention, stays in contention here in Paris for another win. That was a miraculous clear.
from BZ Madden and Brightly LS. They stay on zero penalties going into the final round later on this afternoon. What an absolutely superb round. Well, Jess, on the final day of the Longin FEI World Cup jumping final, and that lady there representing the United States is in the lead on zero penalties. BZ Madden with Breitling LS. We're down to the last 20 riders. We're down to the last competition of the four days. And now it's crunch time because we are going to watch the next 20 riders, of which there are at least three who could take this title. Can BZ Madden repeat the title she gained in 2013 and win the 2018 Longin FEI World Cup jumping final? I'm Phil Gazala and I'm delighted to be joined by Jess Curtin and we're going to hopefully bring you the action over the next hour inside this arena. Jess, it's been an incredible three days of jumping, hasn't it? Oh, what it has, Phil. This has really been a hot championship here. And, you know, nothing has been over at all. The last round had a few victims. Some of those riders and horses who were right up there, they got caught out. But those who have been leading the way stay leading the way. Peter DeVos has come up really well. It's um, really busy is leading, but Devon Ryan has, there we see him, Devon Ryan foot perfect with his lovely Sirocco blue son, Eddie Blue, looking the most comfortable of anybody in there in the first round today. But he's chasing, he's on six points. And Henrik von Ackermann with Toregs, Mary Lou, of course, breathing right down Beasy's neck. Wonderful shots of Devon Ryan, just the nine-year-old Eddie Blue, as you say, Jess. A, a combination of athletes comparatively unknown coming in, certainly on the European circuit, coming into this Paris final. Yes, of course, uh, when we're talking of, of, of the different continents that we have in show jumping, even on the American circuit, you wouldn't say that Devon is one of those riders who's, who we're seeing regularly in the American team. And Eddie Blue certainly has been catching the eye. He's been in the in the headlines now over the last months. He's been winning competitions and uh, maybe up to this point not taken super seriously. They've just been ti quietly tipping away, but certainly now Devon Ryan and Eddie Blue are there. That's the first eight coming in reverse order. Robert Whittaker for Great Britain will get us underway. Marcus Enning, Steve Gerdat and Daniel Doyser in that first eight. All previous winners not in contention today. The next eight, Harry Smolers and Emerald on 17 points. He was looking good a couple of days ago. It hasn't quite worked out. Roger E. Bost, who was the big hope for our hosts here in Paris, but he's on 12, three fences off the leader, as is the reigning champion, Double H Azure, ridden by McLean Ward, United States, also three fences off the leader. Down to the last five. Peter DeVos has just risen five places from the previous round earlier this afternoon, but the top three... Devin Ryan, we've just been talking about, six points off the current leader, BZ Madden. Enrique von Eckerman for Sweden, just one fence behind. BZ Madden hasn't touched a pole all week. Santiago Varela, the course designer, looking warm. A lot of pressure on that man. Absolutely, but he enjoys this pressure. It's, this is the moment that he's waited for to be able to have brought the horses and riders into the final round so close that he can build a really demanding track. So it's going to be the last round that we remember deciding the World Cup winner of this Longines World Cup final here in Paris Bercy. Michael Whitaker for Great Britain. There's a man who's thrown himself into contention. He's on 11 penalty points, Peter Devos for Belgium. He's slightly off the pace, but he has gone from ninth to fourth within the last hour and a half. And there you can see that wounded Peter Weinberg had a fight with his telephone earlier. There is Urmas Rag jumping fantastic with his daughter from Verdi coming into this final. The leader, Beasy, concentrated. Just behind Beasy Madden, one fence behind. There he is. On the well, like third on the podium a year ago in Omaha. Looking to go better. Steve Gerdat, not in contention today. Previous winner of two finals. 
Jamie Barr just had a fantastic final here with her lovely Luibo. Daniel Doyce. <laughs> that looks more like a Baywatch video than a show jumping. Really he just needs jump. to have the swimming dogs <laughs> on his way. <laughs> Busy doing a slightly more reserved version of Pamela Anderson Husband there. Behind. There's Roger Ebos, former European champion, reigning team gold medalist for the Olympic Games for France. The pressure, the tension inside this arena as they walk the course for the final competition of this 2018 final. John Madden, partner, husband, partner, trainer, everything. Her right hand mine, all these years they've done this together. Carlos Enrique Lopez, Colombia. Eduardo Alvarez Aznar, really a young man who's come to the fore this winter season. Santiago Varela has again given us a time allowed of 68 seconds for 13 obstacles, 16 efforts. It's a big track out there. It's technical and it's demanding. It's going to be interesting now. We were going to be able to go through in this course that he's built today. The strength, the stamina is going to be measured. And of course, the concentration of horse and rider. We're starting left handed at, at the bottom. One meter 50, one meter 40, the Ariat Oxer. 30 meters down to one meter 57, Cheval Liberty. Then they have to keep a good canter, gallop right around the bottom of the arena to come back to this red Oxer. Actually, over the red oxer and then it's 23 meters up to white vertical and 2140 up to this white oxer it's going to be five and five for the most long and short difficult line turning back into the triple combinations it's exactly the same place just the other way around difficult building one meter 58 eight meters 20 one meter 60 eight meters and then it's 153 160 coming out Bending turn, 25 meters 80 to this big cafe theater oxer. There is a choice, six or seven there. The most will take the seven. Then they've got to keep going, but keep themselves room to jump this 160. Toubon Clement vertical with the water mat behind it. Then bending line, 27.50. Difficult line. There will be decisions to make into the double with the silver and the golden poles. 7.90 in there and very difficult. 1970 up to the Longines Oxer. It's a very long four, but it's an unbelievably short five. They've got to get turned as quick as they can to get inside the time allowed. One meter 62, the FEI vertical. 26 meters 50 down to the Equi team. And then I tell you, this is a short distance. 1830 to the flimsy Longines plank coming home. Those four strides are going to be for some people a nightmare. Moments away from the carbonation of the 2018 Longines FEI World Cup jumping final. 20 athletes coming forward. Little side bet always between Germany and United States. You've won the final 10 times apiece over the last 39 years. This the 40th running. The United States are in a good position, obviously, to take 11 places. Of course, in saying that, you say that the Germans and the Americans have been the main winners. You know, other federations can take a leaf out of their book. Why have they become so strong? Because they have built up over years and years a backbone behind their riders. They've got such great support teams from everything, from physiotherapists for the riders and the horses, right down to planning which hotel they're going to stay in so they at least have a comfortable bed and a clean room to sleep in while they're at these championships. And these are things that the smaller federations have to work on in order to give their riders the best possible chance when they come to these championships. We're underway here in Paris. The final day, the final competition of the Longines FEI World Cup jumping final. First in the arena, Robert Whittaker for Great Britain with the 15-year-old gelding Catwalk the fourth. Robert who added five penalty points to the 20 he carried forward from Thursday and Friday earlier. So starts on 25 penalties in 20th place. Robert Whittaker, Catwalk the fourth for Great Britain. And it's really nice to see, Phil, from a possible 20 horse and rider combinations who could come back 
for this final round. All 20 have come back, just showing the respect that they have for this great event here in Paris-Bercy. We can run through the course now with Robert. 30 meters, some will do seven, some will do eight. He's down on the seven, of course, the best option for the time allowed. And they need to really keep the rhythm around this corner, this one meter 53 oxer. And some may do six here, but normally it's a long five and a short five. Comes up on the five, he's a bit off it, but jumps in. Now he's got to really shorten and still have that go to get over the back bar in this oxer. Catwalk doing that really good. Then here they've got to keep the horse straight coming in, stay very careful and ride out and then make a choice, six or seven here. He comes easy on the six. That was a good option, but of course, this very tall vertical coming up now, one meter 60, with the water mat lying behind it, tempting to knock it down. He goes on eight in here. Long on the four. Catwalk jumping that fantastically. Of course, these lines taking a lot of stamina for the horses, and now they just have to stay careful. That six is a little short, and this is really short. Stay careful. Time allowed, 68 seconds. Robert Whitaker just outside that time and finishes on 30 penalties. Fence down, one time penalty. Total 30 penalties for Robert Whitaker and Catwalk the fourth for Great Britain. Yeah, Robert was really over the time allowed there, so we will see that um, he did take one, possibly two extra strides into that silver double, but I would say um, there will be a difference to that, but he was not slow, so it really does show neat lines, and the riders are forced now to keep going. There's not a whole lot of time to be able to set the horses up for that double of verticals going into the triple combination. We started with two riders from Estonia. We have one remaining in the top 20. Irma's rug with the 10-year-old man Ibel van der Groothart for Estonia on 23 penalties. These two have had a great championship, both horse and rider. Irma's riding really well and Libel jumping absolutely fantastically. We were saying earlier, Jess, that in front of the shoulders, you wouldn't mistake the sire, would you? Certainly not. He went down on the eight strides there keeping cantering, but she's not a fast mover. Although he's moving forward, he's taken quite a few strides to come around the corner there. They'll need to be a little bit quicker around that turn. For her, she eats that five. Now he's got to shorten her up, which he does. And you can see even, even Lebel there, who's, who's got a really big scopey jump, she really had to stretch for that back bar. He's very slow around the corner. You know, he's, he's really wanting his horse to do a great job and he's helping her as much as he can also on the six strides, but of course, he is likely to pay for the time allowed with this, but it really looks as if he's not worrying about that. He just wants to have a good ride with this horse. Also on the eight strides coming in. Oh, got lucky to come out. What a great jumper this mare is. But really, Irma's taking very much the tourist route around here. Wow. Well, a super, super round. A couple of time penalties, but Jess, as you say, a very respectable jumping round indeed. Absolutely stunning, and this man can really go home so proud of himself and a little, a little bit more proud of his horse. Um, absolutely outstanding result, and hope we'll be able to see these two together in the future. Two time penalties added to the 23 volt ball forward. Clear jumping for Irma's uh, and Nibel van de Groothart for Estonia, finishing on 25. Really able to see that some of these distances were, were very, very easier for, easy for Lebel with her amazing scope. Um, and really, he did take his time with the time allowed, but as we get further up the leaderboard, people aren't going to be able to just tip around and say, I'm going to be happy with a great result. They've, they've got to get without those time faults. At this point, the time faults are so costly. They finished in 29th position a year ago in their first World Cup final, they're going to be above that score today. Jamie Barge for United States with the 13-year-old gelding, Luebo. 23 penalties brought forward. 
18th place. Jamie is normally one you expect now with Louis to be able to ride inside the time allowed. Beautifully down on the seven strides. And now you have to keep going around this course. This is a place where riders can keep going because a good big jump over this oxer will help to make that five strides a little shorter, which will make it easier to get the short five to this wide oxer. Beautifully done by this pair. And she's not slowing down either. She's taking the chance, keeping going around the corner, trusting her horse. Whoa, really trusting her horse. Oh, and didn't he answer for her? And up on the sex, she's really riding for it. But of course, when you're riding this positively, the danger now to get a light fault on the way is there, and it's happened. That, of course, was not Lebel's foot. That was just his, his overreach boot flying off there. And the danger you can see after the long four, the riders can get really carried out on the corner. They'll have to watch that for the time allowed. She was inside the time allowed, Jess, but only 0.4 of a second. Yeah, it's very, it's very, very tight, Phil. It's extremely tight. Although in saying that, she was fast the whole way. Yes, she did take a couple of chances, but she lost a lot of time after number 10, the Longines Oxer going into the corner. She was really forwards on the four, and then she got carried way out beyond the Longines clock into the corner. It is possible. It is possible. Oh, and that's a very fair gesture. 9B is on the edge. And even though she's full of emotion, she warns for the next rider. Very fair fun, Jamie, there. Just telling the guys with Toubon Clement to fix Four added, 27 faults in all for Jamie Barge and Luebo for the States. Great campaign during her second London FEI World Cup final. Uh, you can just see she'd been taking the risk the whole way down through the triple combination. Quite incredible the way Luebo jumped that. And then getting uh, a so corner. It was a shoe that came off. Yeah, shoe and over each foot. But agree. shoes are only shoe in this great ground. It's uh, yeah. you can see the horses can keep can keep jumping, and this great team of blacksmiths out there that'll be on in five minutes. Now we move to Switzerland. On 21 penalties, a great clear earlier on this afternoon from this man, Paul Esterman, with Lord Pepsi for Switzerland. 21 penalties in all, a clear earlier today. Paul and Pepsi are the first candidates going in for this second round to actually be joint winners or out winners of this particular leg of the competition. 300,000 on offer today for this single competition. So although he's not playing any part now in the overall results of the championship, he does have a chance to take home a lot of money if he can jump a clear in this round as well. Beautifully ridden there by Paul, got up on the five strides and very patiently without taking away from the rhythm. And again here, just saying, come on, steady, Pepsi. And now push. Yeah, was maybe going to go on the six, but Pepsi just spooked at the number on the ground there and he just said, okay, we'll just stay patient, move out and take the seven. It's a little costly. Oh, I don't know if he should have fixed his hat in the corner there. Yeah, that four is quite deceiving. They need to really move up early after the combination to not have to stretch too much in that oxer and take away too much jump for this last line. And the last down. So, eight jumping, one time penalty for Paul Esterman, finishing on 30 penalties. Paul Esterman and Lord Pepsi for Switzerland. Yeah, this is a good marker of how difficult this course is. One of our souverain clear rounds in the first round gets caught out on two different fences in this second round. Just lies all over that last jump. Oh, Andy Kistler, oh, suffering, poor Andy. Former winner of three finals on no less than three different horses. In fact, he used two on one final as they can do. He was bidding to be the first man to win four Longin FBI World Cup finals. Wasn't to be this weekend. 
in 16th place on 21 penalties. Marcus Enning for Germany with Coronado. Another pair that were well able to jump clear around here and able to get inside of the time. Just whether Coronado will have concentration and the stamina for this course. Again, Marcus has a chance for that pot of gold this afternoon if he can jump a clear round or certainly be one of oh, we got dragged in on the five there that five gets really short oh, exhibition moves up well on the six of course when they go on the six they have to make sure they get enough room to this vertigo comes nice on the seven Move up on the four, does it, got it beautifully. He's just got to watch now, he turns as tight as he can, but without losing the rhythm. He's just got to keep him careful coming home. Keep him careful and now wait. Brilliant. Well, 0.3 of a second inside the time, absolutely perfectly judged. An education from Marcus Enning as he jumps a clear on the final day of these finals. He stays on the 21 penalties, but that was a mark of the man. It hasn't gone according to plan over the three days of competition, but he ends on a masterclass. Yeah, that was really wonderful to watch and also to see foot for foot perfect. This is the round those top riders want to be able to nail today. Moved up beautifully in the four strides, was coronated, didn't have to try too hard on that oxer, and was really careful, took him back once around the corner. That last line is a very, very careful line. It's not about the power, it's about the concentration of horse and rider. He won consecutive finals in 2015 and 16. Former Olympic individual champion Steve Gerdat for Switzerland, riding the 12-year-old mare, Bianca. 15th place, 19 penalties brought forward. Clear in the first of the two rounds today. Yeah, it was a lovely clear round that the two of them delivered today. They've had a difficult campaign so far this weekend, but really beautiful to see the relaxed way that the two of them took that first round on today and delivered such an easy looking clear round from both horse and rider. having to support her a little bit over the back bar of that oxer. Oh, and deep here again, Bianca answered beautifully. Of course, every time these things happen, the horses really have to work and it takes a little bit out of them. And Bianca giving everything here. Fantastic round so far. Well, we have just witnessed two nothing short of excellent rounds of jumping here in Paris. That following Marcus Ennings clear was a brilliant clear from the former champion Steve Gerdat stays on the 19 penalties Steve Gerdat for Switzerland clear with Bianca yeah and lovely to watch today the pressure was off the two of them today they just went out there to compete in this as a single competition and really you could see the exceptional quality of this mare 
and the elasticity of her jumping. Super, super, super results. And Andy Kistler happy again. Good to have, <laughs> good to have two ribbons. Much appreciation shown from the crowd for the man who's riding at his 25th Longin FEI World Cup final. For Great Britain, Michael Whitaker with the 12-year-old mayor, JB's Hot Stuff. 18 penalties after the three days of jumping. Added just one time penalty to the 17 he picked up on Thursday and Friday early this afternoon. Yeah, Michael and Jazz jumped a super, super first round and really unfortunate to get that time fault, but he had to, to help her a little bit and add some extra strides. But going in with a time fault is, is better than the four faults. If he can get another time fault or even a clear round now, it's going to put him right in there to share some of that money that Steve Gerda for this moment is taking home alone in this individual competition. And certainly this mare has moved up and shown that she is really a star this weekend. Yeah, just backed off. He tried to help her off the front bar and just backed off too much and touched the back. Yeah, you can see Ooh. just starting to get a little tired. Michael trying to support her. Now he's going to have to really support her coming home. It's going to be tight for the time. Oh. Yeah, horse getting tired, and Michael just felt that she was getting too tired, and rather than land on a back bar, he just wanted to turn a circle. And you can just see she's getting she's getting tired. She's not she's not able to keep the concentration. And a little piece of horsemanship from Michael Whitaker just to bring her home there. So Michael Whitaker finishes with 35 penalties after his campaign here in Paris with JB's hot stuff. Just see, she was already touching number one there. And here he just tried to help her, but she was just that little slow and couldn't get the speed to go over the back bar, losing a little bit the scope there. The former champions from 2014. This combination of athletes wowed the French crowd in Lyon that year. They're not in the shake-up this year, but it's great to see them and a brilliant clear early this afternoon. Daniel Deusser for Germany with his former champion, 15-year-old gelding, Cornette de Moore. Clear earlier, having brought 17 penalties forward from Thursday and Friday. Yeah, another rider that started the championship off really well. Had a blip on day two, but has come back today with a stunning first round. And Daniel will be looking now to keep Cornet motivated through this course. Nicely jumped up through there. Really tried both of them to come out there. Now it's a case of just keeping motivated, saving energy. Daniel really needs to support him now coming home, these last two lines. Trying to not to be in a rush around there to give him just, just time to settle. This is looking good. Just outside the time allowed, a frustrated but smiling Daniel Deusser with his wonderful former champion, Cornette de Moore. He adds one time penalty to the 17 he picked up earlier in the week. So he finishes on 18 penalties. Daniel Deusser, Cornette de Moore, 18 penalties. 
Yeah, it's really nice to see that these riders who came here wanting to win this final, then having a, a difficult day on the second day, still keeping their cool and their determination to close the final with a great, great final day. And that's just showing you the leaderboard at the moment. Of course, we're jumping in reverse order. Penalties gained over Thursday, Friday, and earlier on this afternoon. This, the final day of the 2018 Longin FBI World Cup final. Sole representative for the Netherlands, Harry Smolders, with his 14 year old stallion, Emerald, in 12th place with 17 penalties. Cracking round on Friday, but found himself in 12th place on 17 penalties after the round earlier today. Emerald and Harry, of course, have been responsible for so many great rounds for their country and for their global league team. It's not Harry's weekend this weekend. Had a great round with him second day, but Sinius let him down on the first day. Yeah, Harry was trying to balance him. He wanted to run over the shoulder, and Harry Ooh. turned him to the outside to try and balance him, but Emerald's just not, not staying with him straight in the body and just running over the shoulder. And Again, Harry noticing then to the double that everything was just not right and he had to turn away and have another shot at it. So the world number two in the global rankings finishes his campaign in the World Cup final, finishes on 29 penalties. Harris Smolders for the Netherlands and Emerald, 29 penalties. You could see already coming into the triple combination, Emerald really hanging to the right. And Harry desperately trying to keep him straight. For the United States, with 15 penalties, Alison Robitel with the 13 year old gelding ace. Miss Fifth World Cup final, personal best, a couple of 20 years ago, uh, having had a break, have a family, finish 15th. Alison and Ace, who've been just getting more solid every round. Love to see them finish up with a great round here. Give Alison confidence for the future, get her back in the sport. Clear jumping in the first round this afternoon. One time penalty, as many did have. Great partnership that these two have formed. Alison just waiting a little bit around the corner. Ace really gave her everything to jump the oxer and then responded in the line. Just started to get unbalanced around the corner. And this is the thing about Santiago's courses. You've got to find your balance. If you lose it for a couple of strides, you've got to get it back. Otherwise, something will go wrong. So, a couple down, one time penalty for Alison Rebertil. Finishes on 24 penalties and 24 penalties for Alison Robitel and ace for the United States. 
There you can see Ace really giving everything to jump that. Trying to get the balance in the last stride, but it was just that little bit too late. Now to the final 10. In 10th place on 14 penalties, Carlo Enrique Lopez for Colombia with Admara second. Had a fence down in the last round, dropped him back, but Admara still jumping very, very well. Of course, with a clear now, he could give himself still a solid position. Too far away in points to get on the podium, but he could finish with a good placing. Looking to be really taking his time to number three. He's going to have to make that time up somewhere else on the course. Picked up a time penalty earlier on today and on Friday, I think it was. Yeah. But Admara really answering all questions and jumping super the whole weekend. Showing what a great horse this is. Got lucky there. This is another great round from this too. But time is going to be such an issue. Time allowed already passed. Clear jumping. Great jumping round. Time penalties to add. So two time penalties. Finishes Carlos Enrique Lopez's campaign on 16 penalties with Admara for Colombia. Yeah, and really, this combination very, very solid the whole weekend. And I think he can go home very proud of his Admara and what he has jumped this weekend. We now move in to the first of five athletes within three fences of the current leader BZ Madden who's led this competition from the word go on Thursday for France Olympic team gold medalist raising the crowd's hopes here Roger E. Bost with Sangria de Corti yeah, super clear earlier I think this is a good point Phil you know he's only three mistakes behind the leader and two mistakes at this moment behind um, a podium, nearly a podium place. You know, Devon Ryan's got those two time faults. There's, it's still wide open. Lucky Robin the first, hopefully. It sounded loud, I couldn't see what happened. No, they have, uh, they do it a lot here in France. It's actually great, they have the, these little boxes with microphones. Yeah. But they sit ju just at the bottom of the jump, so it gives a little bit more of atmosphere of the, the stadium, the people hearing the, the last strides on the jumps. Of course, the horses and riders have to get a little bit used to it because the first time you ride and you hear drung, 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 it can be <laughs> a little bit off-putting, but it uh, it helps for atmosphere. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, oh, clever was that. I think France helped them to jump that one. This is a careful jump. You've got to give a bit of room now, Bosti. I think he's looking looking like a ti time fault candidate. He was really trying to give her time, but just got out of the rhythm around the corner. We really see how demanding this course is this afternoon. There's certainly by no means. In earlier years, you could have said the last round was just formality, but not here today. Adding nine penalties, two down, one time fault 
for Roger Ebos, 21 penalties in all for Roger Ebos and Sangria de Corti for France. And that's the last of the French competitors, the last competitors represented for our hosts here in Paris in this competition. Jan Bostian getting a great send off from the crowds here in the stadium, rightly so. It's difficult jumping in here and respecting that the two of them have really given given the crowds a great show of fighting the whole way through the competition. The second rider on just three fences behind the leader. For Spain, a man who's shooting up the global rankings, currently in 78th in the world. For Spain. Eduardo Avare Aznar and Rockefeller de Pleville Bois Mago. A great clear earlier in the first of the two rounds today, having brought forward 12 penalties from Thursday and Friday. Yeah, Eduardo and, and uh, Rockefeller would certainly be one of those favourites to chase up the ones at the front of this competition. They've been jumping so well all weekend. If he has the stamina now to jump this round, another clear round, he keeps the pressure on. Did a good job of that, just finding difficulty there to make the last stride, but stayed calm. Oh. Costly, costly. You can see how these horses, some of them starting to tire. These demanding tracks starting to pay. is a lot of jumping and the horses need to be fit and of course if you have a horse who's got a lot of blood like Torvax Mary Lou on a weekend like this it can be to your advantage but another great round stops the clock inside the time allowed but that one fence down adds the four penalties so 16 penalties as a final score for Eduardo Avre Aznar and Rockefeller de Pleville Bois Mago for Spain. Still in this particular competition today, Steve Godin, the only one to jump to double clear. Eduardo and Rockefeller had a great campaign all winter season to qualify to come here and really have had a super, super Longines final weekend, getting very close. For Belgium. Olivier Philippards with H&M, a legend of love. 12-year-old man on 12 penalties. Having added a frustrating four earlier on today. Well, this lady certainly has enough stamina to jump this round. Just she and Olivier now having to keep the concentration. Well ridden, Olivier. And again, beautiful piece of riding up through there. Got to try and get her straight for this combination. Not easy with her. She's always running a little sideways out of the corners. Takes a seven strides. Good choice for these two. Of course, it does take time. Could be running into a time fault here, but even that's going to be better than a fence down. Oh, just got run into it. Sat on the back bar, another one that pays. Just the one fence down. So four to add to the 12, 16 faults. The end of the campaign for Belgium, for Olivia Philippart and HMN, a legend of love. 16 penalties. Now for the moment, keeping his seventh place overall, sharing with Eduardo and with Carlos. 
and what a disappointing fence down for these two. He really tried to help her, just got dragged into it and lay on that back bar. Father Ludo suffering again. The defending champion from 12 months ago, McLean Ward for the United States with double H Azure. Not been the campaign they brilliantly showed us in Omaha, Nebraska last year when they took the title on 12 faults coming into this final round. McLean is a master and he knows the ups and downs of the sport. The position he's sitting in at the minute, if he could jump a clear round, he is going to keep the pressure on because this course, oh, stumbles. This course really takes a bit of jumping and it could suit this big jumping lady. He just has to give her the opportunity she needs, get her enough room and give her the opportunity to jump these fences. A clear round here is going to put the pressure so much on those ones to come. He's watching his time, moves up to the combination. Oh, again caught. I really moved up there and just caught the front bar out of the Ford's movement. Goes on the five strides. That's going to make this short. Goes for three. First one to do that doesn't get it. Oh, and she saves him. Stops the clock, 65.72, but a frustrating additional four faults from that fence down for the reigning champion. Finishes on 16 faults for Clay Wall, United States, with double H as year. 16 faults. Yeah, it was all going so well in the first half of the competition. He got him beautifully into the combination. Then he made the decision to take a stride out to the double which just dragged him in and she caught it out of the forwards movement. He'll have kicked himself for that. And then he does make the decision on the last light to take a stride out. It's an interesting decision, but fortunately, Azur saved him. Sweden, with the two live hopes still in this 2018 Longin FEI World Cup final. This the first of those two. Douglas Lindelow with the 13-year-old gelding, Sacramento, 12 faults brought forward. I love the way the further we get up the lighting, the quieter the, the arena gets. Nobody dares to... The more to nervous I'm getting. They, they don't dare to breathe at this stage. <laughs> Falters have added four to their scores. Yeah, it certainly uh, opens up the competition more at the front end, but only for the podium positions. It really means that DeVos, Ryan von Eckham and Armaden have got the game to play between themselves. The first mistake, just a little loss of concentration here for these two. Perfectly timed round, but the two fences down at eight to the twelve. With 20 faults, 20 penalties for Douglas Lindelow and Sacramento for Sweden. We're now down to the top four. And it's really starting to open up between first place and fifth place is now four fences. This competition really starting to open up and of course this round is starting to get critical. Now it's starting to get really hot. He's for Belgium on 11 penalties. Peter Devos with his 14-year-old gelding, Espoir. 
a brilliant display of jumping earlier this afternoon. Stayed on the 11 penalties he picked up on the first two days. One fence down would put him on 15. There is Grandpa, his groom, looking very pensive as he takes the video and tries to watch at the same time. One fence down would leave him on 15, would still leave him for the moment in fourth, fourth place. place. But if he could jump a clear round, he could put a little pressure on for a podium place. I wouldn't dare to say that he could win it because that would take a big disaster from Beasy, but podium position could be within reach, but he's got to jump a clear round. On the 15 faults now. Opening it up even more for the top three. This course very, very demanding. So the man lying in fourth place adds eight to his score. The finishes on 19 penalties. Pieter Dibos and Espoir for Belgium, 19 penalties. We're now down to the top three. So 16 faults now taking the fourth place overall. And we only have two clear irons from 17 to just about the same. Round. We only have two clear irons, which really shows how difficult it is. And of course, a lot of these riders have not had the pressure that these top three are going to have, which is, of course, an, an, an added, added disadvantage. But look at look at the distance. I mean, really now, Phil, could we dare to say that we're about to see the three who are going to fight it out for those three podium places. Can we dare to say this? Well, the man just about to come in, the arena's on six penalties. The closest to him is 16. He can have two down and still stay in the podium. If he jumps a clear round, he puts an awful lot of pressure on the other two ahead of him. First World Cup final for this man from the United States of America. Devin Ryan riding the nine-year-old, Eddie Blue. Well, there'll certainly be a lot of supporters at home, both those from his own barn, friends and owners who will not have been able to make the long trip to come over here. And we hope that you're sitting around the television here now, crossing your fingers for this wonderful partnership and carry them to another clear round. Six penalties. Wonderful clear earlier on today. Top three. It's just going to be interesting to see how these two cope with the pressure. They've never been in a championship like this before. It's the final round and they're sitting in third position overall, breathing down the neck of Henrik von Eckermann and Beasy Madden with Breitling. Oh, lucky touch there. Is that going to help him? Devon staying so cool, giving this horse a very good ride. Foot perfect for the moment. He's got to give him a little bit of room here. He's got to give him a chance to get his shoulder up. Well done. Oh, come on, Eddie Blue. Oh, that's a difficult one. Come on, Eddie Blue. Three fences left, Phil. Still clear. For this the comparatively unknown rider, can he go clear here at the final, on the final day? Yes, he can. Half a second inside the time. Devin Ryan, Eddie Blue, just a nine-year-old, goes clear 
double clear today, but more importantly, on only six penalties after three days of jumping, that, that puts serious pressure on the next two, the last two to come, Edric von Eckermann and the overnight leader, BZ Madden. Well, it may not have been enough, but the performance of these two, Eddie Blue and Devon Ryan, have been the performance of champions this weekend. And they really do deserve a hero's welcome when they come home next week. What an exceptional performance and how fresh for this sport. Two to go. Third on the podium last year in Omaha, Nebraska, this combination of athletes for Sweden. Hendrik von Eckermann with Tobex Mary Lou, one fence behind BZ Madden, the leader, on four penalties. And he's no fence ahead of Devon Ryan. He's got to go clear. With the four faults, Devon Ryan on six, he cannot, he cannot have a fence down if he still wants to have a chance to win this competition. Takes the eight strides and hits it. Wanted to help her, but he took the eight strides. Devin Rahn in to second position now. What a sensation. He can still keep third position if he jumps the rest of the round clear. He's sitting on four for the moment. He can actually have two, two. down I and keep the third position. Yes. But of course, we still don't know what Beasy is going to do. Devon Ryan is in the lead. Beasy Madden can have a fence down now. She can have a fence down and win it clearly. And she can have a fence down and one time fault and win it clearly. And that is very, very helpful, Phil. Henrik and Mary Lou fighting now to come home. Wanting to keep their place on the podium. Takes an extra stride. A brilliant round. He stays on the podium. Whatever happens, Andrik van Eckerman, he finishes with a total of eight penalties. Andrik van Eckerman, Tomex, Mary Lou complete their campaign at the 2018 Longin FEI World Cup jumping final on eight penalties. So in to the lead with one rider to come goes Devin Run from America on six penalties. So we, whatever happens, we know America's going to take the victory here, but it's all about these individual athletes and the pressure on this lady, which of course she's had before. But what a moment for the United States. Last to go after four days, three days of jumping. BZ Madden with Breitling LS on zero penalties for the United States. Jess, as you say, a clear and the benefit of a couple of time penalties, which we've seen the time has played a part in this. That's very, very useful. Well, how I see it, Phil, you know, what a position to be in. She can have a fence down and a time fault. If it's meant to be, you know, you can be unlucky and rub a fence. You can be unlucky and have a time fault. But when you can go around this track today, jumping the way they've been doing, can have a jump down and can have one time fault. What a position to be in. And if it's meant to be today, BZ is going to win this. Oh, Ooh. it's gone. It, it's gone. Now she's got to stay clear. She's just got to stay clear. She can take her time and have a time fault, but she's got to stay clear. She cannot have another jump, Phil. Devon Ryan, he must be out in the practice arena. Just wondering what's happened to his life in the last three days. Three to go. 
She's okay for time, but she's got to jump these two jumps. She can't touch that blue plank. She's got to jump go. it. This Come is on, it. BZ. Oh, she's done, done it. it! She has done it. BZ Madden for the United States has repeated a victory she got five years ago. She is magnificent. She's awesome, and she's made history. What a tremendous performance from BZ Madden and this wonderful, wonderful 12-year-old stallion, Breitling LS. They've only run one pole in five rounds of jumping. It has been absolutely magnificent what we've witnessed here in Paris. Well, she won it in 2013 with Simon. She's back here again, and I don't think Jess Beasy would mind me saying she's at 55 years old, the oldest rider ever to take the title, to ever be the Longin FEI World Cup jumping champion. What a tremendous moment for Beasy Madden. What a tremendous moment for the United States, for the sport, to see these two maintain incredible performances throughout three days of jumping. Yeah, and we're just watching here, Beasy winning this amazing championship. And while you've been talking, Phil, I've just seen John and Beasy's owner, Abigail Wexner, just going to find each other, taking each other in arm, and both looking really, really, really so happy and lovely to see the smile on Beezy's face. She worked for this, Breitling worked for this. And you know that she has a fence down in this last round, Phil. This is part of the championship. It's all about the three days and she worked for that. She worked to have the opportunity. She could have a fence down. Here we go, Beezy Man takes the World Cup jumping final with Breitling LS. Devin Ryan with the nine-year-old, also for America in second place. Audrey von Eckerman with Tobex Mary Lou repeat their podium finish from 12 months ago. Last year's champion, McLean Ward, double H, zero, finish in fourth. And Olivier Philippartz for Belgium in fifth place. Now on the second, former winner Steve Gerdat in 10th. Marcus Enning finished in 12th place with the wonderful Cornado. Ermas Rag, who had a super campaign for Estonia in 15th, as did Jamie Barge with Luebo for the United States. Harry Smollers, them rules, it sort of unraveled for them, that great combination. They finished in 17th, and the two Whitakers, Robert Whitaker, Uncle Michael, finished in 19th and 20th place, respectively. What a tremendous championship. What a tremendous scenes here in Paris at the 2018 Longin FEI World Cup jumping final. BZ Madden repeating the performance of the former champion, McLean Ward and Double H Azio 12 months ago. They won every day. It doesn't always happen like that. In fact, it's quite rare for that to happen. And we've seen it now. Two different American riders have basically gone through the card. Absolutely. I mean, uh, BZ really set herself up winning day one, uh, winning day two. And, you know, as fate would have it, it could have been that um, she would have, you know, Henrik could have jumped the clear round and would have left it that she had to jump clear. And... Uh, this was not the case with Henrik having the jump down. Really, it just was, was fairy tale stuff. It was meant to be. She was able to go in there, have a fence down, have a time fault. And uh, there was a lovely shot. Sorry, a lovely shot there of former champion Steve Gerda at the Switzerland just going up, giving a hug too busy, but then went up and stroked Breitling's head. Wasn't that lovely? Yeah, but it's great respect, and that's one thing that we have to remember. Our sport is, it's about the partnership between the horse and rider. Yes, we've got some wonderful riders out there, we have some wonderful horses, but the horse and rider have to meet each other, and uh, there's busy taking time with Breitling, and, you know, it's that's what it's all about, and whoever wants to be a champion, it's about the horse and the rider, nothing else. It's not a, It's not about the rider alone. You know, you take, you take us off our horses, um, we're just bog standard people. Jess, on Wednesday when we got together to talk about the competition, I said to you, who's Devin Ryan? I think I now know. Well, I think you, cer <laughs> you certainly know who Devin Ryan is as a jockey. And I can tell you, there'll be a lot of press out there. They'll be, they'll be uh, uh, running down there trying to get interviews with Devin Ryan. And you know what's exceptional? Um, take nothing away from Beezy and Breitling and their amazing performance. But it's always interesting when somebody new comes on the scene and keeps the cool the whole way through, which was exceptional, was how Devon kept his cool the whole way through, how he knew exactly 
uh, how to ride the courses. You know, great support from the entire American team. Great support for whoever are the people close to Devon. Infor unfortunately, I don't know who would be his trainer, who would be his supporter, who the closest are, but certainly my hearties congratulations go out to Devon, to his entire team, to his grooms, to his people at home, and uh, certainly to those who support him. And, you know, what a lovely horse, what an absolutely lovely, lovely horse this Sirocco Blue Sun is, this Eddie Blue. And hasn't he got a great name to go in there? He's made a little bit of history today. An American one too. BZ Madden, the legend. And I said it at the beginning of the week, and I'll say it again, probably the best lady rider in the world, not taking anything away from anybody else. But this lady is so complete. The consistency of the top three, because that's what this championship is all about. They jumped a speed class on Thursday. Friday, a table A, so two rounds. Clears going through to a jump off. A day off on Saturday when everyone relaxes and chills out a bit, but of course the riders had other horses to ride. And then two rounds of Grand Prix jumping today. And that's what the horse on the screens now that finished in the silver medal position, just nine years old. I mean, Jess, that in itself is, is extraordinary as well. Because the horse itself looked, it's been an athlete all week. Yes, it's wonderful. I mean, nine years old. We, we're only in April. It's the beginning of, of the year for a nine-year-old. Yes, some horses are more advanced than others. This horse has got a very, very cool head. And he has been building up to this. When you look at the record of this too, how they have been building up to the, this event. But let's remember they've been building up outside. So to be able to come back inside and uh, over these technical courses from both horse and rider, I'm as much impressed from the rider as from the horse this performance all weekend it's a very very special second place that we have um, here in Paris this year um, you know sometimes people are disappointed to be second some people would even say second is not a, not a good place to be but I think when you have a podium finish it's exceptional at a championship and um, BZ is our amazing winner but Devon is also a winner and Torvax, Mary Lou and Henrik are also winners it's it's just wonderful to see the performance just, of all these combinations. And uh, let's just talk about them because they got a um, team silver in the European Championships. Torvex, Mary Lou, and Dominic Van Eckerman in front of their home crowd in Gothenburg. Then a few months before that, 12 months from ago from now, today, they finished third on the podium in Omaha. I do feel a little bit sorry for them, but at least they're back on the podium. Well, <laughs> um, I don't think you should feel sorry for them. Um, I understand where you're coming from. Um, that's a little bit the problem when you're very, very successful. Um, it's always it's always kind of expected to see the win and um, it should really not be forgotten how difficult it is only one can win and how difficult it is to win and a combination that is so successful as they are um, you know it's a very very special thing and yes you would like you would like to see them get the win um, but it's not it's not meant to be um, but such such in incredible consistency is, is very special Let's enjoy this winning round. This is a recording of the winning round of the 2018 Longines FEI World Cup final in Paris. A few moments ago, history was made. And of course, well done to Alfonso Romo of Mexico, who bred this horse and to Team Nyhoff and Jerome Doubledum, who discovered him and had him approved as a stallion as a two-year-old. And well done to Team Madden for finding him and producing him. You can just see changing his legs there, the little signs of him getting a bit tired as he comes around the corner. Beautifully ridden, always going forwards, but still able to shorten the horse within the length of his body. And really, Beasy set him up good for this. Silly mistake. If anything, he could have said she was ever so slightly deep coming in, but really, it would be expected that he would have jumped B, and that was just one of those things that happened but that she kept the cool and was able to keep him motivated. Good opportunity on the four here, just to give him a little bit of leg, just to re-motivate him. And then she stayed so cool and brought him 
beautifully home on this last line. Lovely to see. <laughs> yeah, Robert Ridland can hardly believe it. Jess, I want to just talk a little bit more about, about BZ. You know, I mentioned that she's in, in her mid-50s. And I want to look back, you know, she's been riding now for the, you know, the top of the sport for over three decades. Fitness, rider fitness has, over the years, more focus has been put on that. And this is one athlete who has really focused on her own fitness, hasn't she? There's absolutely no question. BZ and her husband, John, um, have been two people that have found, found the way, shall we say that, over the years, find the way to the gym. Um, and it's, you know, it's not just about fitness. It's the same as the horses. Yes, it's fitness, but it's strength. It's elasticity. Core strength. It's core strength, balance. And, you know, all these things, you can actually really help a horse when you yourself are, are very fit and you've got core strength. You can really help the weaknesses of a horse, especially when you ride a horse a long time, because if a rider is not straight in their body, they can actually unstraighten a straight horse over a, over a long period of time. And that's why it's so unbelievably important. The gym, the chiropractors or the osteopaths, the physiotherapists, and the same for the horses, you know. The horses are athletes, but we are actually athletes too. We may not sometimes behave like them, but we certainly are athletes. And what about mental strength of a rider? I mean, you, you look at Beasy Madden, and I've been privileged to see her in different parts of the world, certainly from the outside, looking at her, she seems to be totally in control the whole time with herself, you know, and, and it doesn't seem to be any uh, anxious moments or anything. She's totally calm. I mean, there have been some wonderful shots backstage of her over the last few days with Breitling LS, you know, when everyone's warming up and jumping. She's just very peacefully just standing there nice and calmly. It's, you know, that's also very important, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. But I think Beezy, from her nature, would be like every every dream for a for a team manager because she is naturally very calm cool and collected she's not somebody and she says it herself she's not somebody who gets overly excited but it's very interesting to see over the last couple of years you know there is a lot more mental awareness in the sport and a lot more mental training going on and we actually are seeing at these championships much less um faults happening through nervousness of riders and this is a great a great thing to see because the nervousness is something which can really get in the way of the best rider in the world uh, and it's very disappointing when somebody has put all the work into it gets to this event and simply because uh, the butterflies get to be too much and, and just turn the brain in the wrong direction two strides in front of a jump and that spoils the winning of a championship it, it's disappointing and uh, certainly now to see that the majority of the, of the people these days have got that in control. Either they're naturally relaxed, but normally if you're naturally relaxed, you also have disadvantages elsewhere which you have to work in. Or people who tend to get a little bit nervous with the tools that they can get from mental trainers, that they can really, really boost themselves and help themselves in the sport. Jess, you famously finished second in the 2006 final behind Marcus Henning. Did, you know, that was 12 years ago. Have things changed mentally, you know, with mental training and everything since then? Or was that going on when you were on uh, the podium? I think it was definitely going on at that stage, but I think it was, it was not accepted, um, like in some other sports. Certainly, I didn't have any mental training, and uh, it was actually, actually in the last year of my career that I met Andy Schwartz. Uh, mental trainer and I actually did spend a couple of days with Andy to, to learn about the tools and it's it's been very rich for me as a trainer to be able to give some of these tools to, to, to my students and also to advise students to go and see a mental trainer um, because you don't know what something is until you've until you've witnessed it yourself and I think that it's you know a mental trainer is just as important for, for an athlete as, as their physiotherapist and it's completely acceptable these days well we've just seen the former champion McLean Ward who double H is here who finished in fourth place leave the arena he hands over the mantle to his compatriot BZ Madden and now we come to the top three and they're nice to see Henrik walking in and his girlfriend, Janneke Sprunger, just making a little photo, probably to put up on the website. Well done to this great combination. And, you know, knowing Henrik, yes, he's going to be disappointed. He's, he's so ambitious and he works so hard and wants to be, wants to be a winner. And, but, you know, when everything settled down, he and Mary Lou had, again, such a great championship. And what an incredible championship. This man, Devin Ryan, 
has had with his nine-year-old Eddie Blue. Yeah, he'd better get himself on a plane and get home and celebrate with all his family and friends. This is an exceptional moment in his career and an exceptional moment for everybody involved with Eddie Blue, from his breeder in Holland to everybody in America. Beasy Madden, the winner of the 2018 Longines FEI World Cup final in Paris. Second time five years ago, she won it on Simon and repeats it on Breitling LS in 2018. What a great moment. America and Germany, who in the 40 years of the running of this most prestigious indoor event, the one ten apiece coming into this. America goes one ahead, 11 to 10. And quite interesting also, you know, John Madden, her husband, he has been very involved with the FEI over the last years in the jumping committee and has actually given up that role last winter, given over to Stefan Ellenbrook from Germany. And, you know, Phil, that might also some have something to do with it. More concentration together on the real thing that they love, the real thing that they do. You, you do have to be able to focus and it was maybe just one of those little things that pushed Beezy right back onto the top of the world, that she had John by her side, fully concentrated. I know the two of them love the sport, they live for the sport, but sometimes just to be able to focus that little bit more on what you're doing, attention to detail, can make all the difference. Three competitions three consecutive wins for the 2018 champion. Undisputed, undefeated, BZ Madden. And you can always see at these moments is a mixture between elation and exhaustion for the riders. What must be going through that man's mind? <laughs> you know what? You know what's probably going through his mind? If I'd only had two points left. Yeah. <laughs> we we talked about Beezy's smile getting wider over the last few days. It's got quite wide now. Yeah, she's doing she's doing well now. She's got, got a big smile, Beezy. And uh, she certainly is not somebody who looks for the limelight. That has never, never been her way. Um, but she knows how the game goes and she, she has to smile, otherwise people would, would misinterpret. But one thing is for sure, inside, this lady is elated. The national, national anthem of the United States of America. Wonderful scenes, wonderful moments, excellent sport here in Paris. The 40th running of the Longines FEI World Cup jumping final goes to the United States, to Beezy Madden.
Son Altesse, le cher Rali la Khalifa. Amongst our officials, I'd like to introduce you to the uh, FBI Vice, Vice President, His Highness, Cher Khalid Al Khalifa. Monsieur le Vice President de Bougie, et Directeur Marketing International, Monsieur Juan Carlos. Presentations Sanchez. will be made by the FBI First Vice President, His Highness, Sheikh Khalid Al Khalifa. Madame la Présidente de GLEDOT et Question Sport, Madame Sibir Robert. Sibir Robert, the President of GLEDOT et Question Sport. Je vous en prie, et bien maintenant, c'est à vous que revient le privilège d'aller saluer les meilleurs performeurs de ce podium et monsieur le premier vice-président de la Fédération Caisse Internationale pour aller remettre donc les trophées récompensant donc tout d'abord... Oh, well, Phil, you had your hands on that trophy earlier today, <laughs> no? Yeah. We did have on the cup, so... FR representative, the first vice president, His Highness Sheikh Khalid Al Khalifa, presents for Sweden, Omri Bon Ackerman, with the third place trophy. Devon Rahn in second spot for the United States. And now the trophy, she's held it before, another sweet moment in a glittering career of Beezy Madden. The World Cup champion of 2018, Beezy Madden for the United States. Riding the wonderful 12 year old Breitling LS. Bravo à chacun des trois. Et bien, nous allons inviter Monsieur le Vice Président de Longinet, Directeur Marketing International, Monsieur Juan Carlos. Of course, there are many people involved in this great win for Beazel, many, many people behind, behind the scenes who play a part in it. The Longin Vice President and Head of International Marketing, Mr. Juan Carlos Capelli, makes the presentation of the Longin timepieces to the three riders. Henrik would have a few of those watches now at this, at this point. Mr. Juan Carlos Capelli, Longine Vice President, Head of International Marketing, congratulating Henrik Barberman for the third place, Devin Ryan for the second place, and of course, congratulating Beatty Madden for this fabulous victory, ladies and gentlemen. Beatty Madden, United States! Beatty Madden's groom, Sue Schlegel in the background with Breitling. Breitling, like Beezy, has been so composed over this last four days. Representing the organizing committee, Sylvie Robert of GL Events, the organizers of many shows in the equestrian world. Jess, it's, it's been fantastic sport from the beginning of the week. There are some hard luck stories, the disappointments, but there's also elation and. Beezy Man, uh, we talked about McLean Ward and Double H's year winning every round as Beezy has done this in last year. It must be it, it, just incredible to be able to come to a championship and jump so consistently over the four days like they have. Yeah, absolutely, certainly. And uh, I mean, really, Beezy was fortunate to have her fence down in, in the last round when she when she got herself 
that opening. Um, I mean, it's sometimes sometimes it's very difficult when you look at a championship results and you say, yeah, but he only had one fence down and somebody with two fences down is actually ahead of him. It's just a little bit the the way it works out in a championship. And Beasy was left in the position, you know, could just as well have been if she'd had to jump the clear round that she would have jumped the clear round. You know, sometimes when you have the door a slight little bit open, <laughs> you, you just kind of take it. Um, but that's 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 just the law of it. And her Something like putting yourself under pressure. Yeah, that's it. She's just she's just uh, she's hammered this this final with and husband John. Just yes, and in. I think that's lovely that he's there. Um, normally, it's quite difficult to get the partners persuaded to come in. Um, and that is the owner of Breitling, Abigail Wexner. And, you know, it's just right. She was here on the stands beside us, and John left his lucky spot, went down and grabbed her, you know. And I think if he hadn't grabbed her, she wouldn't actually have been able to get off her seat. She was, she was so emotional about it. And this is what it's all about. We've got the owner of the horse in there. We've got a partner. This is what our sport's about. And, you know, it's difficult when you're commenting to, to mention everybody, Phil, and actually to know who everybody is um, because there are so many people involved in the sport. But it's so important to remember that's what it's all about. All those faces make a winner as much as the sponsors and the supporters of the sport. And that is a, a lovely picture that they will be able to treasure. And a little kiss. After all those years, a little kiss for those two. And uh, nobody's going to be happier than John Madden going home tonight. That is wonderful. Says, I'm trying to recall. I think this is my night final. I don't think I've ever seen the owner. We've seen it. We've partner or husband. We've seen it once or twice. But of course, John does does have the position of having been high in the FEI. You know when. When he wants to get in the in gate into the arena, nobody's going to stop him, you know. And sometimes uh, officials can a little bit get in the way. Somebody's trying to get there, and you know, somebody can be standing there and say, "No, no, you don't have the correct accreditation. You cannot go in." But uh, lovely to see this, and great congratulations to everybody involved with all these horses, and of course with all these riders. Easy Madden, Devin Rahn, both United States, Enrique von Eckermann for Sweden. Oh, I think they're going to have a champagne bar. Oh, I think they are. Hmm, I, wonder, I wonder when Beasy and Devin are getting on the plane to go home, because obviously if they're, if they're going for a transatlantic flight tonight, they're going to be a bit smelly, aren't they? All that champagne. I hope they can get a shower. I noticed that Devon was just moving backwards a bit there. Yeah, because I bet you Beezy's good on that bottle. She's Go on, Beezy, get it open. Come on, girl. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Don't we love it? <laughs> She's done well. She hasn't managed to get any on herself. <laughs> uh oh, yeah, we're going. Did, yeah, that, that's she smart. That's bottle. a smart lady. Uh oh, she hasn't reckoned with the strength of, of uh, Henrik von Ackermann. Can you imagine? Uh, World Cup winner Beezy Madden breaks arm with a fight with Swift at the prize giving. <laughs> what a way to finish it up. Well, we're just going to have the lap of honor. Well, it's been an amazing final here, Phil, and it's been so much fun being here in Paris Bercy for this wonderful event. And as they get on for their lap of honor with the horses, I'm going to say thank you all very much. I've enjoyed being here, and Phil, carry them out. I'm going to run and get my plane. Jess, as always, it's been an absolute honor to work with you. Thank you. What a great, great three days of competition we've had. The sport is very much alive. Very much. And well done again to Beezy and Breitling, and take care, everyone. Cheers, Jess. Bye. Well, lap of honor time. Beasy man and repeating a victory she had in 2013. Oldest winner of this prestigious title, the most important individual indoor competition in the world in its 40th year. Goes 
to America for the 11th time in the four decades of the Longin FEI World Cup jumping final. Devin Ryan has shot himself into the headlines with his wonderful nine-year-old, comparatively unknown Devin Ryan on the international circuit, certainly in Europe. Now everyone has heard of Devin Ryan and the wonderful Eddie Blue. Henrik von Eckerman for Sweden. Third on the podium 12 months ago with Torbeck Mary Lou. Identical performance again here in Paris. But it's all, oh, it's all about the leading lady of America here in Paris. It's Beezy Madden with Breitling Ellis. The victorious lady in the 2018 Longin FEI World Cup Final. Well, it's been tremendous competition over the three days of competition here in Paris. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. We have thoroughly enjoyed it. So from me, Phil Gazala, it's goodbye and good night from Paris from a historic 2018. Bye-bye.